What is going on guys, welcome back. In this video today, we're going to build a simple side connectivity checker tool in Flask. So let us get right into it. All right, so as a quick preview up front, this is what we're going to build today, a simple side connectivity checker where I can enter a URL, for example, neuron9.com. I can check if it's up or not. In this case, it's going to tell me the site is up. I can check for another site, something that probably doesn't exist, .com. Site is down. And I can also go ahead and say neuron9.com slash route that does not exist. Check. And in this case, it's also going to tell me the site is down. So this is what we're going to build today. All right, so for this video today, we're going to need to install two Python packages. And because of that, we're going to open up the command line and we're going to use pip or pip3 to install flask and requests flask for the web application and request to send a request to see if a site is up or down. So we're going to install these two and then we're going to build our flask application that is the connectivity checker. So I'm going to say app.py. We're going to use the usual structure of a flask application from flask import flask. We're going to also import render template. And we're going to import request. And then also we're going to import the requests package like this. Then we're going to create our application flask underscore underscore name underscore underscore template folder is equal to templates. And then we're going to define an index route, which is going to be our homepage, you could say. And in this index route, we just want to render the template index HTML, which is going to be part of our templates directory. So we're going to create a templates directory, we're going to create an index HTML file here. And this index HTML file will have a title site connectivity checker. And here we want to have a form that allows us to pass a URL. So we're going to say here, a uh, site connectivity checker, and then we're going to have a simple form. And this form will have an action, this action will go to URL four. And we're going to just call this then uh, check or something. And the method will be post. And it will contain an input of type text that will have the name URL. And we'll have a placeholder enter URL. And it's going to be required. So like this. Uh, and then we're going to have a button input type submit here with the value check. That is our index HTML. And since we're uh, referring to the check endpoint here, we should define it. So we're going to say app route, and the route is going to be slash check. And we're going to say that this is going to be the function check, we're going to allow for methods post only. Um, and what we're going to do here is we're going to get the URL. So we're going to say the URL is going to be whatever we pass here. So request dot form dot get URL. And then if not URL starts with and then it should either start with HTTP. Or it, sh it should start with HTTPS. Like this. One of the two has to be the case. If that is not the case, we're going to artificially add it. So we're going to say URL equals HTTP and then plus whatever URL was before. And then all we have to do to check for connectivity is we have to do a try accept block here. We're going to say response is going to be equal to request or requests dot get the URL allow for a timeout of 10 seconds. Um, and then we're going to check the status code. And the idea is that if we get anything below 400, so if we get a 200, a 300, a 100, the site is available, if we get anything above that, or if we get an exception, it's not available. So the site is down, or we can consider it down. So we can say if response dot status code is below 400. We can say the status is equal to up. Otherwise, we can say the status is equal to down. 
like this. And also, if we get an exception, and let's say we want to have the requests request exception here as the case, if we get such an exception, we're going to also say that the status is down. All right, so at the end of this try except block, we will have a status variable, which will either be up or down. And all we want to do now is we want to return render template results.html with URL being equal to URL and status being equal to status. And then the usual, of course, if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals underscore underscore main underscore underscore, then we want to run the application app run debug true in case we want to change something. That is it. Now, of course, we need to have our results HTML file. So I'm going to copy paste the index file. I'm going to say results HTML, we're not going to have a form here. All we want to have here is a simple uh, Jinja if statement, which is going to be if the status is equal to up, what we want to do is we want to say um, P with a style being equal to color green. We're going to say the site URL is strong up like this. Then we want to say else we can copy this, we can turn this to red, and we can turn this to down. And we can do an end if. There you go. So if I run this now, we should be done with the coding. That's a very beginner friendly project, as you can see. So again, I can go neural9.com. Check. There you go, neural9.com is up. I can go neural9.net. I don't think that this site exists. It's down. Um, I can go to youtube.com. Check. YouTube.com is up. I can also, of course, pass the full URL. So neural9.com like this also works, of course. There you go. It's up. And if I pass a different route, it will tell me it's down. So yeah, this is a simple beginner friendly project. This is how you build a site connectivity checker in Flask. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.